at Manuel United Church. We welcome all those who are watching this service on Zoom and those of you uh, that will see the service on YouTube. Um, Janet Haig has an announcement she'd like me to communicate with you. Uh, this Friday at 10 o'clock, uh, she's wanting uh, some assistance to take down the Christmas decorations. Uh, it's Friday at 10, and if you can assist, please uh, talk to her. And Jean Lethbridge wants to know if uh, you have some spare time on this Tuesday afternoon. The church kitchens upstairs need uh, some attention. If you could tidy up and enjoy some company, uh, you can talk to Jean at coffee break today. And other items, uh, Bible and prayer study, the seven week study <clears throat> on intercessory prayer will begin February. If interested, please contact Reverend Tessica. Black History Month planning members are asked to meet with Reverend Tessica next Sunday, immediately following worship in the fireside room. Emmanuel moments, articles, and announcements need to be submitted by the end of today. A reminder that annual reports from committees and groups are to be submitted to the, uh, the church office by no later than January 30th. Then we uh, have a games night coming up Friday night at seven. The cost is $5 per person. You can play Euchre or Mexican Train. All are welcome. You can bring a friend and refreshments are available. Support Christine Carlton for the coldest night of the year walk, Saturday, February 25th. This year, the walk benefits neighbor to neighbor on Hamilton Mountain. Details on how to donate are set out in this week's newsletter. And finally, anybody celebrating a birthday? Tom, yep. we have some special birthdays in our congregation this morning. Marianne, right? We missed you last week, so we're going to celebrate with you. But this morning, a bird whispered to me, flew into the church and out and then back in and said, Doug Loudon is celebrating his 65th birthday today, <laughs> or this on Tuesday. And as you would, see, would have seen, those of you who were here last night would have left with your heart uh, overwhelmed with joy. Uh, my son Azrael has marked uh, his entry into adulthood, and today he's celebrating his 18th birthday. Richard, we ask the birthday celebrants to stand. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Anybody celebrating an anniversary? I guess that concludes the messages. Thank you. Okay. 32 years here at Emmanuel. Hey, congratulations. Can we play something special for Richard? A hymn or something during the worship? Yes. He doesn't want it, but 
Elaine or Azrael, could you help us with a hymn here? Let us sing for Richard. It's an anniversary hymn that I'm looking for. No, we, we don't want him. We are marching in the light of God. Could you, Azrael? Richard, we don't want you to play it. So just take a seat somewhere here, please. Elaine? Oh, oh Azrael is coming. Six, four, six. Can we just take our hymn books and celebrate with Richard 32 years as an organist at this church? Six, four, six. Should have brought the books with me for the um, intercessory prayers, but forgive me. There was so much going on between yesterday evening and now, I forgot the books. But yes, there would be a seven week study in February. The book belongs to you when you get it. Even if you can't make a contribution towards the books, they belong to you. And every day you will do 15 minutes devotion from the book guided by the book and then we'll meet once per week as a group to discuss what we have reflected on for the week guided by the book and so um, next week I promise you the books will be available if you are thinking about joining and you need a book in advance please call the office, leave your name, and I will have a copy for you next Sunday. Let us prepare for worship.
shining light, Mary's child, your face lights up the way. Light of the world, Mary's child, dawn on our darkened day. of our life, Mary's child, you tell us God is good. Yes, it is true, Mary's child, shown on your cross of Christ walks in our streets. So we acknowledge his presence because without him we are in darkness. His light dispelled the darkness in our homes, in our street corners, in our shops, in our restaurants, in our schools, in our gyms, wherever people are and gathered, Christ is there to offer light. Call to worship. A star shining brightly in the east, discovered by those who have eyes to see the unusual and the challenging. Journey into the unknown territory taken by those who have courage and curiosity. An encounter with an evil person evil face head-on, yet resisted with care. The woman Christ in the light of humble origins, the glory and gifts given to God's chosen child. The hymn number 81, as with gladness, men of old.
Let us pray. Let us silence our hearts. The light of God shines brightly. It draws seekers to the source of all good. Cutting through the darkness of sin and self-serving. Giving hope to all who live in the valley of the shadow. Gloriously revealed in the light, death, the life, death, and rising of Jesus. Prayer of confession. When we have seen the challenging star, yet have failed to set out on the journey. God of hope, forgive us. When we have encountered the forces of evil and have compromised and gone along. God of conscience, forgive us. When we have known worth of, and goodness, yet fail to give the support of our best gifts. God of love, forgive us. When we have realized the value of a community of friends, yet have tried to go it alone. God of church, forgive us. As we reflect and confess, you address us, O God. Resolve to trust you and to change our ways. You encourage us as we set out again to live faithfully. You journey with us. Pardon and peace are yours. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Sing again the hymn number 74, What Child Is This?
And hello to those who are worshiping with us via Zoom and those who will be worshiping with us later on via YouTube. Good morning to those who are present in worship this morning in the sanctuary. It's a joy to be here. This is Epiphany Sunday and we are rejoicing that there is a star or there are stars leading us to Jesus. Those who are worshiping with us for the first time or who haven't been here for a while, hello, welcome. This morning I want to focus on the children's message on the three gifts that the wise men brought to Jesus. What are they? Again, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And each of these have a significant, a significance. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What does gold represent? Royalty. Which means that they recognize in this Christ child that he is royal, he's king. And so they offered, first of all, the gift of gold because they came and they paid him homage. They worship him. We recognize you as king and the common thing to do when you enter the presence of a king is to pay homage to the king. Then the second gift, frankincense. Do you know what's the significance of that? Hello? Huh? No. Hello? Priestly, priestly order. Now that's what the priests used to burn in the temple. They would burn that the first thing before worship. And the intent is that when these are burning, have you ever gone to an Anglican church or a Catholic church? They continue to use them. When these are burning, the intent is that the aroma would ascend and it would appease God. That if God was not looking well, when he smell the aroma, then he will take a closer look. But it would appease God. And there are some people who can't take the smell of it but still they go in the presence of it because they want God to look at me. See me. If you haven't seen me for a while, see me now. So the, re the reason for uh, the priest doing this is because the priest becomes like the intercessor, the go-between, the worshiping community and God, asking the divine to take closer attention. Here, very interested, the wise men offered to Christ frankincense which means that they acknowledge in this Jesus that he is the intercessor from very early, that he holds the, not a, but the priestly order. And he is interceding between humans and God. 
revealing the way of God and revealing to God human's fallen nature. The final one, mer. All right, death. So they are seeing ahead, we can say that. Because this is what is used to anoint the dead person. It is a form of embalmment. And they are offering this to Jesus. Though we acknowledge you as king and as priest, we also acknowledge that you are going to suffer humiliation. And this is to take care of your body until you are resurrected. So these wise men were not foolish. They were not only looking at the now. And that's something I've been reflecting on for the past week. How many of us get involved in things to get the gratification, the instant gratification, which means the joy now. And we neglect the pain that it could bring later on. As a church, we are here as a worshiping community, not only to enjoy the worship now, but that the worship would inspire us that when we leave this place, we can be good neighbors. Let us pray. God, help us to plan our gifts and to offer them with meaning and insincerity. Look upon us and open our minds and our hearts to appreciate you where your blessings flow upon us every day. If we have taken your gifts for granted, forgive us. And enlighten us to be the best. Have mercy and bless us. Amen. Our first uh, scripture reading this morning is from the Old Testament, Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 6. Isaiah 60 casts the magnificent vision of Zion's future, full of light, prosperity, and prestige. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young uh, camels of Medan and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Our second reading is also from the Old Testament. 
This psalm is understood by most scholars to be a coronation hymn for the king of Judah. Psalm 72, verses 1 to 7, 10 to 14. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May, the, uh, may he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in, in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May uh, he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles uh, render him tribute. May the king of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him. All nations give him service, for he delivers the needy when they call the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life and precious is their blood in his sight. Our last reading is from the New Testament, Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12, the visit of the Magi is the gospel reading for Epiphany. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. Far from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, its mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by an, another road. May God bless these readings of his word.
Let us pray. God of light, let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And bless your word to our hearts that we may glorify your name, O Lord. Amen. I'm captivated by the verse in Matthew chapter 2, verse 9, that says, When the wise men saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. There's always a notion that Science and scientists are far apart from the way of God. That scientists cannot and will not discover their faith in God because they do not believe in a creator. In fact, we have gone so far with this belief that there are some churches that have distanced themselves from any form of science or scientists. The study of beings and nature ultimately leads to one not having faith in God. That's their belief. And this is not true. In fact, the study of beings and nature leads, to one, leads one to discover the creator who is the author of faith the one who points to the right road in life. The Magi were astrologers, astrologers, sorry, or magicians who studied the galaxy. This is what led them to discover something special about the star in the sky. We have seen the star in its rising, they said. Immediately, they recognized that this was not a normal star. And so they followed the star. A careful study of the scripture or Matthew's writing would reveal that while they were following the star, Herod tried to distract them. He called them and inquired of them, where is this child? And they announced to him what the prophet said. He's to be born in Bethlehem of Judah. For you are by no means the least. Herod then set out with the intention to kill the child. But the wise men, after leaving Herod, persisted the star. They went on looking for the star and they found it. And when it stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy before they found the child. They were overwhelmed with joy. I have taken time to put this in its proper context because I want us to note 
that these wise men, in some sense, were looking for faith, were looking for the king, were looking for an opportunity to interface with God. And the star led them to baby Jesus. These wise men were scientists. And they were Gentiles. Most unlikely candidates for God's revelation according to humans' understanding. They were far from God because all they did was to study nature and beings. And sometimes there were those scientists who give the impression that nature happened out of something and beings were formed from other beings and they deny the existence of the creator the wise men were gentiles and they were scientists and what happened that day reminds us that anyone and everyone could have an encounter with God. Those wise men may have come to Jesus after the shepherds because the journey took a long time. The shepherds came as soon as the announcement was made the wise men took a while to get there as they followed the star. Unlikely candidates encountering God. This is what the scripture has taught us. You don't have to be from a particular family or group or have certain experiences to encounter God. In fact, the scripture, the men of the scripture who stood out were persons who we would deem as unlikely candidates. That's why epiphany is so important. Because the word epiphany really means a revelation or a deep experience. Think of Abraham. He had his epiphany. A deep encounter with God. An unlikely candidate. And the Lord said to Abraham, By your seed, all the earth will be blessed. Sarah, who committed adultery, sorry, Sarah, Abraham's wife who took her servant girl and gave it to her husband. Later on, had such an encounter with God. And even Hagar, the woman who committed adultery with Abraham, had a great encounter with God while she was running away with her son after Sarah had treated her so badly had that experience that revealed to her that God is still caring for you. And God will bless you. Moses was a murderer and a fugitive. He had killed an Egyptian. 
and he was running away from Pharaoh. And on a mountain, God said to Moses, take off your shoes for the place you are standing on is holy ground. David also was a murderer and an adulterer. And God made him king for excellence in Israel. Paul was a prosecutor of the church. The disciples were ordinary, uneducated men. All these persons encountered God and they were persons who we in our judgment would not deem fit for God's kingdom. What God, Matthew is revealing in his writings about the Magi or the wise men is that no one, no one should be left out of the kingdom of God. We all could have our time of epiphany where the light goes out inside of us or the light shines through us to reveal that God is with us. I used to be a prison chaplain in Grenada. And I had an encounter with one young man who was in the 80s on death row. And he spoke about his experience the night before he was to be hung. In the days when he was out of prison, what caused him to be in prison is because most of these guys claimed that they didn't believe in God. And they felt that they had the power to do what they pleased. And for most of their time in prison, even when they were on death row, they held to that belief that there is no God and we don't believe in a God. He said the night before he was about to be executed, while they were preparing the gallows, He went to his room and he felt that this was it. But while he was there fearing for his life, he fell on his knees and he cried out, is there a God out there? If God is there, Show me something. Tell me something that would inform me that I had it wrong all the time. And while he was there, crying and praying and shouting, he felt a presence came over him and called his name and said, all will be well. All will be well. At 12 o'clock that night, or 12 a.m. that very morning, the news came 
his wife came running to the prison, announcing to the prison guard that the prison, the privy council has commuted their death sentence. Today, he's out of prison, preaching and telling his life story. An unlikely candidate is now a preacher. I say this because this is Matthew's intention and this is the intention of the gospel to inform you and to inform me that we are not too far gone to have an encounter with God. Let that light from God shine through you and bring joy to your lives. Amen. Let us pray. We do not count ourselves worthy, O oh God. Because the things we have done in the past and the things that others remind us of, of ourselves, make us feel that we are unworthy. Though we are guilty, you offer us a light and you reveal yourself to us to comfort us and to assure us that there is something in us that works it. Yes, though we view ourselves as unworthy, you still see us as special people, fit to be used, and you are ready to use us. So we come humbling ourselves making ourselves available to you, O oh God. Use us. We can be a light to the children in our communities. Use us. We can be of help to the sick and lonely in homes, use us. We can offer advice to those who are straying, encouraging them to return to the fold. Use us. We can embrace those who feel that they are not loved and make them feel that they are somebody when others cause them to believe that they are nobody. Use us. And may this world be a better place because of us. Use us. Amen. The Lord's Prayer.
receive our offerings. gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh were signs of commitment to God's gift of love. The hymn, I am the light of the world. now in peace and the God of peace go with you.
We leave this church prepared to act with Christ. Prepare to stay the course beside the suffering of with resources of empathy, patience, and abundance. Go with us, loving and compassionate God. Enable us to be your listening ear and your well-tuned instrument for justice and for care. Amen. you who were here last night would have shared in a birthday cake for Azra. But as a church family, he has another birthday cake that he's inviting all of us to share in. <laughs> Today is his birthday. So please, even if you have to leave quickly, come to the fellowship hall, get a piece of his birthday cake, and then you could leave. Let's move to the fellowship hall. Thank you. <laughs> 